Has Apple's next event already sort of leaked? We know Apple has got some big plans for next year and their very first event of 2022 could be a really big one. We could see three new Macs, two new iPads, and even one new iPhone as well. It looks like Apple is going to kick off 2022 in a very big way, and these are the five products we could see launch at their very first event of the year, according to all the leaks and rumors. And let me just say that if you're thinking about buying a new Mac, an iPad, or even an iPhone, you might just want to wait a bit. And a big thanks to Copilot for sponsoring this video. Last year's Spring Loaded event was certainly an event to remember. It was that one that debuted the all new, totally redesigned iMac, the M1 powered iPad Pro with that cool Tim Cook spy cameo, an all new Apple TV with a much better remote, and yes, AirTags were actually made official at that event as well. Now that was a great event, don't get me wrong, but if the leaks and rumors about Apple's 2022 plans are true, then their first event of next year, whether it's in February, March, or April, whenever it is, might just blow last year's Spring Loaded event totally out of the water. We're expecting the star of the first event to be this, the all new redesigned and reimagined MacBook Air that will debut probably early in 2022. This is an all new MacBook Air that is very different from the older models in a couple of big ways. First things first, the design. We now have this two-tone design. We have colors, we have a more industrial design language. The MacBook Air has gotten some changes year over year, but if the rumors are true, this change coming in 2022 will be the biggest change the MacBook Air has seen since it was uh, emerging out of that manila envelope in 2008 with Steve Jobs at the helm of Apple. The MacBook Air is still a great computer, but this can be its biggest change ever. And besides just the splash of color on the outside, Apple's also switching up the color inside as well, actually going with a white accent color similar to those all new consumer focused iMacs. So you have the MacBook Pro, which has the darker black bezel. It's got sort of that black keyboard well, but it looks like on the consumer front on the MacBook Air, that's going to have a splash of color on the outside and then white on the insides. So you're gonna have a white uh, bezel around the display and maybe a white keyboard as well, which is actually very similar and very reminiscent to the white MacBooks of what, 2007, 2008, 2009. I was actually a really big fan of those laptops and it's nice to sort of see Apple become a little bit more playful and have uh, some nice colors and two-tone designs on their more consumer-friendly laptops. Now, when it comes to Screen, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Let's start with the bad news first. The notch is there. Whether it's necessary, whether it's just a marketing thing, whatever the case may be, the notch is uh, seemingly going to be a thing on Apple laptops, the MacBook Air included, and it will be on these new models, at least according to the rumors. Inside of that notch should be the new and improved 1080p webcam for the MacBook Pro, so at least you're getting a better webcam in there, uh, but that is going to be a thing on these new Apple laptops. It looks like all Apple laptops moving forward but the good news here is that that display, while it might not really change size, should become a better panel and a better display overall with Apple going to mini LED technology for the MacBook Air. So it's gonna be bright, it's gonna be vibrant, colorful, great for watching movies and even playing some games on your Mac as well. It's not gonna have the high refresh rate ProMotion technology of the MacBook Pro and the iPad Pro, but it's still a mini LED display that should look great for whatever you wanna do on your MacBook Air. So it doesn't really need ProMotion, it's still gonna be really nice to have mini LED on the more affordable MacBook Air. Now inside powering it all should be the all new M2 processor. This will be the successor to the M1, so think more power and more efficiency. We're not really sure on the details on core counts or anything like that, but the M2 should be inside powering it all inside of this new MacBook Air. MagSafe is making its return, now coming from the MacBook Pro down to the MacBook Air. So don't expect HDMI or uh, USB-A or uh, SD card, anything like that, but uh, you will have a nice mix of USB-C and now a MagSafe port on the all new MacBook Air 2. Now the next Mac we could see at this spring 2022 event is a little bit more complicated and that is an all new redesigned Mac mini. And this is sort of complicated for a couple of big reasons. The main one being that we really don't know how Apple is going to position this. On one hand, we're hearing it's gonna have some new colors similar to the MacBook Air, the iPad Air and the iMac. You'll have this new two-toned look, a great selection of ports on the back with USB-C, USB-A, HDMI and more. And all in all, this is shaping up to be a really great computer 
computer, especially if you already have a display keyboard and mouse, you just need the box, Apple will gladly sell you the really nicely equipped Mac Mini. The question though is how is Apple going to position this computer? Is it going to be family friendly, consumer focused? So it's got the M2 processor inside, which would make sense. Or will Apple give us another model or maybe another spec that's a little bit more pro focused with either an M1 Pro or an M1 Max inside of the compact design of the Mac Mini. Now, before we talk details about the third and final Mac making its appearance at this next event, let's shift gears a bit and talk iPhone. Now, I wish I could say, yes, the iPhone 14 is coming early. We're gonna get a nice spring surprise and you're gonna get your hands on the all new redesigned iPhone 14 much earlier than usual. That of course is not happening, but there is a new iPhone expected to launch in the spring of 2022, and that will be the all new and improved iPhone SE 3. You might remember that iPhone SE 2 came like in what, March, April, May, in the spring of 2020 as a press release. It was sort of in the shuffle of many different things going on in the world, so it's okay if you don't remember that, uh, but that was about two years ago. So now the iPhone SE is in need of an update, and there are a couple of different directions that rumors say Apple could take this. Some more, let's call them ambitious rumors, point to a radical redesign of the iPhone SE 3. We're talking a body very similar to the iPhone 11 with a larger display, two cameras on the back, a hole punch cut out at the top, and Touch ID built into the power button on the side. We're talking a radically new iPhone SE 3 that would basically blow everyone away, especially considering this is a more budget conscious, budget friendly phone. On the other hand though, if we're gonna be a little bit more realistic, that's probably not what Apple's going to do, at least not yet. There are rumors that indicate that that could happen with the iPhone SE 4 or 5, but that's probably still at least a year or two away from 2022. What makes more sense next year is that Apple gives us smaller, more incremental changes to the iPhone SE 3. That means you're gonna have pretty much the exact same design that looks very similar to the iPhone 8, same screen size, same Touch ID home button for better or worse, same single camera, but the upgrades will mainly come in the form of under the hood improvements inside. So maybe an A14 or A15 Bionic processor, which gives you better performance and better battery life, maybe better camera hardware and better smart HDR processing in terms of software and more capabilities. And also 5G will be making an appearance in this phone as well. And should be when it launches, one of the cheapest 5G phone options out there and certainly the cheapest iPhone that Apple makes and sells as well. Now, before we continue breaking down all the leaks and rumors about Apple's first event of 2022, let me take a quick break because I wanna show off one of my favorite iOS apps of all time that is also this video sponsor, and that's Copilot. Now, as we wrap up 2021 and enter into a new year, one of the biggest goals many have is finally tackling their personal finances. They wanna keep tabs on their spending, their investments, their budgets, their financial goals, those pesky reoccurring charges. And the best way to do that is with Copilot. It is here to help you do all of that, plus a whole lot more. The best way to think of Copilot is sort of like a Swiss army knife when it comes to your personal finance management. You can easily link your bank accounts, your credit cards, investment accounts into the app, giving you a super simple way to see all of your most important finance data in one place at a glance, while also giving you custom insights based on your personal finance trends, your goals, and your budget. For example, Copilot has got an all new section dedicated to investments. You can get a bird's eye view of all of your various investment accounts in one place, and also keep tabs on performance in near real time, allowing you to see live balance estimates throughout the day. Copilot also helps you better understand your investments by using a proprietary metric to calculate your investment returns, helping you sort of gain a better understanding of true performance and not just those changes in account balances. And personally, what I just really appreciate about Copilot myself is that it helps me feel way more informed about my personal finances. I can see everything at a glance. I can keep tabs on my spending, my budget. Everything is auto-categorized across various accounts. And also it fully integrates into Venmo as well. So I can see those transactions auto-categorized in basically real time. So if you guys wanna learn more about Copilot and get started today, what would you recommend you do? Hit the link right down below to learn more. And as an Apple Circle viewer, if you go through our special link, you will get access to a two month Month extended free trial of Copilot, two months for free by going through our link right down below. I just love this app. It's simple, it's beautiful, it's easy to use, it's powerful. I'm a big fan of Copilot. I love it. I know you guys will love it as well. So get started today and take advantage of that extended two month free trial by clicking that link right down below. 
And the third Mac that may or may not make an appearance at this first Apple event of 2022 is the long rumored and long awaited iMac Pro. This has been a rumor for a while that Apple is looking to replace the still aging 27 inch iMac that they still sell with something much sleeker, much more sexy, and something much more powerful than the current Intel configuration you can buy from Apple right now, which you really shouldn't buy. Wait for the iMac Pro, it's coming right around the corner and it is going to be so much better. Now, in terms of design, we're hearing this could be some kind of mix between the current iMac that Apple just showed off last year, that redesigned model, and the Pro Display XDR. So I'm not sure what a love child between those two products would look like, but I am super excited based off of concepts and renders of what people imagine this to be. If it's anything like this, it's going to be a really beautiful computer that should pack a lot of great display technology and also a lot of great internals as well that should give you a whole lot of power to do essentially anything. Now, speaking of display, this is rumored to have a 27 inch mini LED ProMotion display. So let's back up here. 27 inches, so a nice uh, large display, a mini LED display, so high quality, great for uh, color accuracy, uh, bright, vibrant, all that stuff. And also ProMotion tech as well. So it's got that 120 Hertz variable refresh rate built in, which basically gives you everything you could want. And in some cases with mini LED and ProMotion is sort of better than the current $5,000 Pro Display XDR. So in some cases you're getting a much better display with a really nice computer built in too. But of course, the biggest question about this iMac Pro, besides when it is coming, is what will be inside powering it? We had heard rumors that this is going to have either the M1 Pro or the M1 Max, and now some new rumors suggest that maybe this is gonna be sort of a turbocharged version of the M1 Max that is even better than the ones in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. So unclear what Apple Silicon will be inside of this, but have no doubt as a pro focused iMac, it's going to be a powerhouse that should let you edit video, edit audio projects, whatever you wanna do with your pro focused workflows, this iMac Pro should be able to handle. And last but certainly not least, let's talk iPad. Now at last year's Spring Loaded, that was where we got the debut of the M1 iPad iPad Pro, which is great, it's powerful, it's got that new center stage technology, better cameras, all that stuff. But really, the iPad Pro as it exists is still a really great tablet, it's got a great design, it's got plenty of power. So what could Apple do with the next generation and could we see it at this spring-loaded event version two or whatever Apple decides to call it? Well, looking back, we have gotten iPad Pro updates the last two springs, so it would make sense to see a new version. But as to specifics, the rumors have been very surprisingly quiet on this front, and we don't exactly know what Apple is going to do. There have been some rumors that Apple's gonna give us a glass back for wireless charging, which could be a thing. Maybe Apple is experimenting with new larger screen sizes and different form factors. And what could be the other iPad that gets an update at this rumored spring event? Could we see a new iPad mini or a base iPad? Well, those two just got an update in the fall of 2021. So the only other iPad that could get an update would would be the already really good iPad Air. And again, it's a similar story to the iPad Pro. The iPad Air still has a really great design. It's got Touch ID built into the power button. It's got a nice display, good processor cameras. Of course, Apple could sort of give it a boost and give it a better processor and even better cameras and stuff like that. So maybe we see some subtle changes come to the iPad Pro and the iPad Air. But surprisingly, again, not a lot of information has leaked out about iPads. So either Apple has something really big in the works that we just haven't heard about, or it's going to be a more predictable, smaller year for the iPads with more, uh, ambitious plans coming possibly in 2023. So keep your eyes peeled for new iPads, possibly coming at this first event of 2022. And that is what we think we know about Apple's first event of 2022 as of right now. Of course, 2022, the year as a whole, is gonna be a big year for Apple with new Apple Watches, new AirPods Pro, new iPhones, all that stuff. But in terms of what is ready sooner than later to get out the door and in our hands, it's probably gonna be new Apple Silicon Max, M2 processor, and then maybe some new iPads in the iPhone SE 3 as well. Not a lot of other stuff seems to be ready, but hopefully this is the stuff we could see launch at the beginning of next year at Apple's first event. So what are your thoughts on all this? What are you most looking forward to? Are you waiting for an M2 powered Mac? Are you really waiting for that iMac Pro? What do you think Apple's gonna do with the new MacBook Air? And uh, iPhone SE 3, are you excited for that? Are you not? What do you wanna see launch from Apple in 2022? And I guess, what do you wanna see sooner in the year rather than later? Let me know your thoughts down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the Apple Circle. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I will see you all in the next one.